welcome back to the fourth session so far we have done three sessions to take a very very brief recap in the first session we have seen what is management accounting then we started with discussion on what are the financial statements we have also seen in our se second session what is a balance sheet we saw the format of balance sheet then we continued in the third session on solving a few problems or few cases on the balance sheet so we have seen step by step if you give a series of transactions how you can make balance sheet from those transactions and in our last that is third session we have started on profit and loss account so today we'll continue from that we'll do a few problems on pnl account and we will also see some of the concepts on which these statements are remain uh, statements have been made once the concepts are understood we will go more into technical aspects as to how the recording is actually done in the books of accounts okay so let us start with pnl account now we have seen last time that profit and loss account is a statement which shows results of the entity so result is obviously the profit or loss now to know the profit or loss we need to know the income and expense so pnl account lists down all the incomes and expenses the net result is here this was the format we have seen this is a brief format so your sales less cost of goods sold you get gross profit from that you deduct expenses and taxes to get the net profit after this we had gone for the format as per the company law now here little more elaboration exists so revenues are shown from the revenue expenses are deducted they have been categorized into different categories the first one are known as manufacturing expenses the second are admin and selling expenses then you also deduct other expenses then we have to deduct finance cost we have to deduct depreciation and amortization expense so revenue minus total expenses gives me profit before exceptional and extraordinary items i also reduce these items to get profit before tax now you may have a question in mind as to what is this exceptional and extraordinary items now as the name suggests these items do not happen regularly they do not happen frequently so if they happen sometimes it is better we show their effect separately so that our regular pnl account is not affected can you think of some extraordinary item for example if there is a major fire in the factory of the company so lot of goods are destroyed even fixed assets are destroyed company may have to spend extra money for getting the premises redone operations are stopped for some days so this huge loss i should not club with our regular profit and loss account because i will not be able to compare my result with earlier results if i unnecessarily club this loss with normal items that is why it could be treated as an exceptional and or extraordinary item and it will be shown separately same way now you all know that developed countries us and europe they are facing lot of recession suppose our company is doing a major export in europe and we lost a very big order and we have also lost some of the customers now if this event is not going to recur and we have some way to protect it now in the next periods but currently some losses have happened and we would not like to show them with our normal losses then this could be treated as a extraordinary or exceptional item now if you go back to the format we arrive at revenue minus expenses to get profit before exceptional and extraordinary item from this separately exceptional and extraordinary items are reduced we get profit before tax 
Now, from profit before tax, the taxes are reduced. Now, you can see the taxes are also divided into current tax and deferred tax. Naturally, the question which will come into your mind is, what is this deferred tax? Now, the taxes which you pay for the current period is obviously current tax. So, if I earn 100 rupees and my tax rate is 30 percent, I have to pay a tax of 30 rupees. That becomes my current tax. Now, what is a deferred tax? Now, what happens is, instead of paying taxes today, there are some tax provisions which allow me a tax benefit by which I reduce my tax, but that tax becomes payable in future. So, actually my tax is not reduced, but it is deferred. So, instead of paying now, I may have to pay after 5 years. Such taxes are known as deferred tax. Now, I will not go into too much detail because right now we are not learning really taxation. But one example I would like to give. What happens is, company is able to show depreciation and claim the benefit from tax purposes. So, let us suppose I purchase a pollution control equipment. Now, government allows 100 percent tax benefit on pollution control equipment. So, suppose today I invest 1 crore in pollution control equipment, entire 1 crore I can reduce from my income for tax purposes and I reduce the tax. But that much of tax is added in the years to come. So, currently my tax is going down. So, my current tax will be reduced but my deferred tax I will have to show. So, what will happen is from profit before tax both current and deferred tax are reduced and that gives me profit after tax. But here again instead of showing profit after tax I call it profit from continued operation. Now, the question which may arise in your mind is what is this continued operation? Now, usually if your business is on, whatever activities you are doing is known as continued operation. But suppose you discontinue a part of the business or some factory or let us say some shop, then that is known as discontinued business. Now, discontinued business, you have to show the profits and losses from such business separately. So, suppose one factory is closed. I have four more factories where my business is on, but one factory is closed. Then the expenses of that closed factory, I will show separately and that will be treated as losses from discontinued operation. So, you can see the format. Now, if I reduce tax expense, I get profit or loss for the period from discontinued operation from which I adjust my profit or losses from discontinued operation. Sorry, first I will get profit from continuing operation, then I will adjust the profit or loss from discontinued operation. I will also adjust the tax expenses of discontinued operation if any. That gives me profit from discontinued operation and that is a final profit or loss. So, which is a total of continued operation plus discontinued operation. So, this was a detailed format, I will just go back for your clarity. So, we started from here. So, this is a format as per schedule 6 of companies act. So, you take first revenues, you reduce all the expenses, then you adjust for extraordinary exceptional items, you adjust for taxes which gives me profit from continued operation. I also calculate profit or loss from discontinued operation and the total is profit or loss for the period. I hope you are getting it. Now, let us try to understand what is meant by income. Now, as you can see in the slide, this is an increase in the economic benefit during a particular accounting period in the form of either cash inflows or enhancement of asset or liabilities. Now, what could be the example of the income? Of course, the simplest example is sales. If I sell my goods to the customer, I will receive the income. Or if I am a service provider, I provide service, I receive income. Sometimes 
if I have given a loan or if I have put deposit in the bank, bank gives me interest, that is also my income. So, you can see examples. The prominent example is of course, revenue. There are some gains. So, sometimes if I sell my fixed asset, let us say if I sell land, I make lot of profit that will be known as gains. Now, let us go to the next item that is expenses. You know that profit is income minus expense. So, what is an expense? Expense is a cost which I borne. It is defined as decrease in the economic benefit during the accounting period in the form of outflow or depletion of asset or incurrence of a liability. So, what will happen is if I hire an employee I will have to pay salary. So, it is an outflow. Suppose I purchase the asset, I do not have to pay the rent, but when I use the asset, the value of asset falls, that is also my expense. Sometimes what happens is, let us say I use the electricity, I do not pay the bill immediately, but the liability has happened, in future I will have to pay the bill. So, that is also my expense. That is why it is defined as an outflow or depletion of asset or increase of liability. All these three represent my expenses. Now, what could be the examples? I have given you two, three. Can you think of any other example? As you can see here, when the wages become due in the ordinary course of business, that is an expense. Sometimes losses may happen. So, if I sell my fixed asset, let us say I sell out my old computer, naturally I will get very, very minimal value. So, there will be a loss on sale of asset that will also be recorded. So, if you have understood now the basic of income and expense, before going for some problems or cases, let us understand a few concepts in accounting. The first concept is entity concept. Even before going for the concept, what is meant by the concept? These are the fundamental principles. Now, the accounting is based on certain basic fundamental principles which are known as concepts. Now, the first concept you can see here is entity concept. Now, entity concept of accounting states that business enterprise is a separate entity from the owner and business transactions are recorded in the books of business and the owner's transactions are recorded in a personal books. So, you, we do not mix up the personal transactions with the business transactions. Now, why it is important? Because business aff uh, affairs should be very, very clearly shown from the personal affairs. Now, because of this entity concept, when owners put capital in the company or in the partnership firm, it is shown as a liability in the books of the firm. Since the owners invest the capital, it is also called as a risk capital and they get the claim on the profit from the enterprise. That is why the total of capital plus reserves is shown as a owner's fund on the liability side. If you remember our discussion in the balance sheet, you might have still had a problem as to why our profit is shown as a liability. So, what happens is profit is generated, it is added to reserves and those reserves are to be paid to the owners. So, we assume that owner is a separate entity, business is a separate entity. That is nothing but an entity concept. Is it clear? Let us go to the next concept. Next concept is known as accrual basis of accounting. Now, if you remember when we were discussing the transactions, sometimes I have told you that we have sold goods on cash. Still, we record that transaction today only we do not wait till we receive the cash. Now, why we do not wait? Because even if we have not yet received cash, 
the transaction has actually happened and once it has happened it needs to be recorded this conceptually is known as accrual basis of accounting now here the transactions are recorded as soon as they occur whether or not cash is actually received now accrual basis ensures that there is proper matching between revenue and cost of the enterprise during a particular period now how does it ensure can you think of any example now what happens is suppose i have purchased the goods today i will record it as a expense i have purchased i have paid i have also sold the goods but customer does not pay me cash immediately customer will pay me the cash next month should i record sale if i don't record what will happen is i have recorded that the expense because i paid cash but i have not recorded an income because i am yet to receive cash so expenses and revenues of the same period are not matched so i will not get correct picture of profit or loss of this month this month i will show loss because lot of expenses but very little income next month this month's money will receive in the next month that time i will show lot of profit because there is more revenue shown so there is a inconsistency that is why it is very important that as soon as expense happens it should be recorded as soon as income accrues it should be recorded even if we don't receive cash or we don't pay cash we need to record and this happens because of the fundamental concept known as accrual basis of accounting so accrual basis means that recognition of revenue and cost as they are earned or incurred and not as when the money is received so as we have already discussed what happens is revenue many times is not received in cash or expenses are not paid in cash but they all need to be properly recorded now let us go to next concept that is known as matching concept so matching concept tells us that whenever the expenses are record, recorded in a particular period the related revenue should also be recognized now matching concepts helps us in avoiding misstating income or revenue or earning for a period and reporting of revenue of one period in the next period without reporting the cost we have just now seen an example where we record purchases but if we record don't record sales there will be a misstatement there will be a understatement of profit can you think of any other example suppose you are a software company you have hired employees and you provide services so what is happening is as you are providing services revenue is coming and it is getting recorded but salary is going to be paid in the next month if i don't record salary this month there will be a big problem because i am already recording revenue but i am not recording expense so even if the salary is not paid it needs to be recorded so matching concept is a very simple concept it tells you that revenues and expenses should be matched in the same period let us go ahead because of matching concepts there is a uh, basis or there is a concept of prepaid and outstanding expenses so if the expense for the next period or the next month is paid now i will show it as a prepaid expense can you think of any example of a prepaid expense now the example of prepaid expense is if the insurance is paid in advance so for next month's insurance premium i am paying now so i'll have to record it today itself and it will be shown as a prepaid expense i will not record it as a expense for this month i will record it as a prepaid expense and it will be transferred to the balance sheet same way if the expense is incurred like salary is incurred but not yet paid still i record it as current salary not yet paid so it will be a liability in the books as outstanding salary okay that is why in the balance sheet items like prepaid expense and outstanding 
uh, liabilities do arise. Now, let us go to the next concept that is known as realization concept. As you can see here, any change in the value of an asset is to be recorded only when the business realizes it. When an asset is recorded at a cost of 15 lakhs and even though its current cost is 45 lakhs, such change is not accounted unless there is a certainty that such change will materialize. Now, when can such an example happen that I have purchased assets for 15 lakhs, its current market price is 45 lakhs. I think it can particularly happen in case of land. If I have purchased land few years back, now the land values have increased. I purchased it for 15 lakhs, current value is 45 lakhs. Should I show it in the balance sheet at 45 lakhs? The answer is no, because I am not dealing in the land. I am not buying and selling and land. It was purchased at 15, I will continue to show it at 15. If I want to sell, I get a customer and the transaction of sale is already agreed upon, then I will show it at 45 lakhs. But otherwise in the normal course, my assets will be continued to be shown at 15. Same way you can also think of other way around. Suppose I buy some computer for 30,000. After two months, next model comes and new model, the value of computer has gone down. So, I purchased at 30, but its current price after three months is only 25. Should I show at 30 or at 25? The answer is I have to show at 30 because I have not decided to sell it at 25. I want to use it and it is still usable. So, transaction will not be shown unless it is realized. Let us go to, you can see in the slide, so we follow a more conservative path and we try to cover all possible losses, but we not we do not provide any possible gain. Here it is we want to say that if we anticipate decrease in the value, we count it, but increase in the value we often ignore. Now let us understand one more format of PNL a little more detail than what brief format we show uh, we saw earlier. So, from sales we reduce operating expenses that gives me operating profit. From operating profit I adjust for non operating income and expenses and we get profit before interest and tax. Now, this is slightly different format from schedule 6 format which we have seen, but it is not much different. Here we have tried to categorize into operating and non-operating. Now, what is a non-operating expense or a income? For example, I am a dealer in stationery. So, I do not deal in let us say furniture, but suppose I sell off my old furniture and there is lot of loss. Should that loss be clubbed with my stationery business? It should not be. That is why my sale and purchase or regular expenses of stationery will be shown as operating expenses, whereas loss on sale of old furniture will may be shown as non-operating expense. So, you can see here sales minus operating expenses, I get operating profit. I adjust non-operating incomes and expense to get profit before interest and tax. Now, what is a non-operating income? Can you think of an example? Same example if we continue, I am a stationary dealer, I have sold off old furniture that is an example of non-operating expense, the loss on sale of old furniture. What could be a non-operating income for me? Suppose some of my money, I mean some of this business money I deposit in a bank and I interest, I earn interest on it, then it is a non-operating income. Because as a stationary dealer, interest earned is not from my day to day operating activities. So, first I will calculate operating profit and I separately adjust non operating incomes and expenses. So, you can see in the format that from operating profit, I adjust non operating income and expense, I get profit before interest and taxes. Then I reduce interest, I get profit before tax. I reduce tax, I get profit after tax. 
Now, it is better if we show interest and taxes separately because I come to know exactly how much is my profit or loss from operations, how much is my profit or loss from non operating items and interest which is a finance cost gets separately recorded and tax which is a outgo to the government also gets separately recorded. So, in this way in this detailed format you get profit from tax again you can use a variety of formats I have just shown you two three formats for your more clarity. Now, let us see what is meant by operating profit. You can see here that operating activities are defined as principal revenue producing activities of the enterprise. So, operating profit is a figure obtained after subtracting personnel depreciation and other expenses from my normal business income. So, this is a surplus generated from operations. We have also seen this term profit before interest and tax. Now, company irrespective of method of financing what it earns is known as profit before interest and tax. Sometimes we make a short form and we call it PBIT. Now, this measure is very important and it is calculated to know the operating efficiency of the business. Usually, if the company is to be taken over by somebody else, they will look at PBIT of the company. It is also known as earning before interest and tax. Now, next is profit before tax. So, this is the surplus where all expenses are deducted, but taxes are yet to be deducted. Then we get profit after tax. So, profit before tax minus tax is profit after tax. This is a very important figure for the company because this is the final amount which is available to the owners. Now, we say it is available to the appropriation because now owners can decide whether it is to be paid as dividend or whether it is to be retained in the company. Now, if owners do not take the dividend or if they do not take back their money, then the owners fund in the business goes on increasing. Now, let us go to the exercise. We have I think you are now fairly clear about the format and the structure of PNL. Let us go to one of the exercises. So, as you can see here in Padmanabhan and company the following transactions have happened during year 9 10. The goods costing rupees 1 lakh 40 thousand were purchased. General expenses of 4800 are purchased uh, paid. Salaries of 255 uh, 25500 paid to office staff. Now, this is an info about sales. Now, it sales on credit for two, two months. Total credit sales during the year are 1,40,000. The cost is 90 and the remaining goods were sold at cash to the retail trade for cash of rupees 6,90,000. Printing and stationary expenses were 5,000 and telephone 18,000. Now, the salary for the month of April 2010 rupees 2000 was paid in advance to one of the employees. Padmanabhan also paid 50,000 towards Bank of Baroda loan of which 5000 is an interest component. 3000 is paid as a tax. Now, based on all this data, we have to prepare PNL account. Let us take a review at all the transactions once again. Please look at the transactions carefully. So, there is a purchase of 140 then general expenses, salaries paid, there is a credit sale, there is a cash sale, printing and stationary expenses are paid, advanced salary is paid, loan installment is paid, interest is paid. Now, let us look at PNL account. So, here you can see profit and loss account for year ended 31st March your cash sales of 69000 and credit sales of 140000 i'll take you back here you have information about sales now even if the amounts are uh, i mean the sales is made on a credit for 2 months so money will come only after 2 months 
still we are going to record the entire amount as sales today and there is also cash sale of rupees 69,000. So the first thing we have shown is cash sales and credit sales of 69 and 140, 500. From that we reduce the cost of goods sold of 140,000. So we get operating profit of 69,500. Then general expenses 4,800. If you remember, they had paid for general expenses of 48 they are also paid for printing and stationery so i am reducing general expenses of 4800 i reduce stationery i reduce printing i also reduce telephone expenses so i get profit before interest and tax i'll just go back you can see these items printing telephone etc they are all deducted so, I am getting profit before interest and tax. Now, I have paid loan installment of 50,000. Should I reduce it? The answer is no. Because loan installment includes repayment of loan of 45,000 and interest of 5,000. It is given that out of 50, only 5 is interest. So, remaining 45 is repaying of my existing liability that is loan. That is not my expense. But interest of 5000 is my expense. So, if you look at a format from PBIT of 16200, I pay interest of 5000, I get PBT of 11200, from which I reduce the tax of 3000. So, I get net profit of 8200. Now, if you see, I am not reducing advanced salary paid to one of the employees, rupees 2000. The reason is, it is not salary of this month, though it is paid in the month of March, actually it relates to April. So, I will not reduce it from my PNL now, I will show in my, lab, uh, in my asset side in my balance sheet. If you remember, we have discussed matching concept. So, because of matching concept, I am not going to record this 2000 now. Let us go back to PNL again. So, you have got cash sale, credit sale, you get operating profit, you reduce all the expenses, we get profit before interest and tax, reduce interest, reduce tax, so you get net profit after tax. Is it clear? Now, if you have clearly understood what is PNL account, I will uh, like to go into somewhat more detail into recording of transactions. Of course, we have seen just two examples of balance sheet and one example of PNL, which is not enough. So, I will request you to look at books or look at some other resources to get little more practice into uh, balance sheet or PNL. You can also look at the web course, which gives you some more examples. Now, let us go to some transactional aspects wherein we will record the transactions. So, we will start with module 3, which deals with recording financial transactions. We are going to look at some of the books of accounts as they are called. There are three books, which we will see. One is a journal, then ledger and subsidiary books. Now, journal. Now, the transactions are first recorded in the book known as journal to show which accounts are affected. Recording of transactions in the journal is termed as journalizing the transactions. Entries are recorded chronologically to maintain the records in an orderly manner. And journal entries are very important because they form basis of all further records. Now, here we do not worry about the nature of transaction. So, suppose first I make cash purchase, then I make credit purchase, then I make sale, then I pay salary then again I make purchase, then I say pay telephone bill, then again I sell something. So, I do not record all sales together or all purchase together. I just record all the transactions chronologically, so that I do not miss, miss out anything. And this chronological recording is known as journalizing the transaction. This is a base where first entry is made. Now, from here, I will transfer them to know what are my total sales. I will transfer them to purchases to know the total purchase and so on. 
Okay. Now let us understand what, how does the journal look like. So here you can see specimen of journal. So we record date, we record particulars, we record LF, LF is ledger folio. Then we record debit amount and we also record credit amount. All entries in the journal appear as follows. So we will try to see now actually how do you record. I know you are still not aware about what is LF. LF stands for ledger folio. Now from the journal the transactions are going to be transferred to something else which is known as ledger. Now first thing an entry uh, we will try to take some entries and see how they are recorded. On 1-11-2010 goods sold for cash rupees 5000, 5th uh, 11 cash deposited in bank rupees 2000. Now only two transactions so that you understand the journal entry clearly. Now the cash account is debited by 5000 and sales account is created by 5000. Here goods are sold for cash. So what has happened is cash comes in, my cash balance increases that is why I say cash account is debited and when I sell the goods, sales is created. So my sale account is created. So my sales should increase by 5000. Now on 511, now cash, a part of this cash is deposited in bank. So my bank balance increases my cash balance reduces. So it is known as bank account debit and cash account credit. So you can see here the transactions are recorded date wise. There is something known as ledger folio. Now from here from this journal the transaction is going to be transferred to some other book which is known as ledger. So I will write down the page number of that book in the journal that is known as ledger folio. Now let us understand what is a ledger. As I told you just now, after recording the transaction in the journal, the entries are classified and grouped and they are transferred to another book that is known as ledger. This is a format. So in the ledger you show date, particulars, JF is a journal folio from where this entry has come and the amount. You can see here there are two sides known as debit and credit. So if the balance is increasing, I will write on debit side. If the balance is decreasing, I will write on credit side. This is of course I am telling you in brief. We are going to see a few transactions where you will recognize, recognize actually how the entries are recorded. Separate account is opened in the ledger book for different set of transactions. Usually we record uh, the transaction on debit side which starts with 2 and on credit side we start with buy. To ascertain the balance in any account, we take the total of debit and credit and the difference is known as balance of account. Now let us take a very small case, prepare the ledger account from the following details. Opening balances are given, cash is 1500, creditors 800, debtors 1200, capital is 1900. I hope now you remember what is cash, what is creditors, what is debtors and what is capital. So creditor refers to I have purchased the goods on credit, I have to pay back the supplier. Debtors means I have sold goods on credit, I have to recover from customer. So it is a customer balance. And what is capital? So there are owners, they have put in money into business, they are the money which they have put in is known as capital. So these are the opening balances of the business, your cash, creditors, debtors and capital. Then take a look at transaction on 2nd April, purchase of goods of rupees 3000 on credit, 4th April, cash sales of 2400, 7th April, goods sold on credit 1250, 15th April, Cash paid 250 for expenses, two more transactions, 18th April, cash received from debtors 1200, 
and 22nd April paid cash to creditors rupees 800. Let us look at the transactions once again. Now we are trying to make ledger. So entries are not going to be chronologically recorded. They are chronologically recorded in journal. In ledger we will classify the entry. So all purchases will be shown together. All sales will be shown together. So I am requesting you to have a view at all the entries. Then we will see how they are recorded in the ledger. So we will say in the books of Ram and company cash account. Now all transactions related to cash are recorded in the cash account. So if you remember there was a balance of 1500 in cash. I will just go back to make it more clear to you. So opening balances had cash of 1500. So in the cash account first we start with opening balance of 1500. Going back you can see on 4th April there was cash sale of 2400. So on 4th April we recorded two sales account 2400. I had told you that on debit side usually we start the entry by saying 2. So like this here it is 2 balance brought down and then 2 sales account 2400. Now tell me which is the next cash transaction. On 15th April cash of rupees 250 as paid as expenses. So you can see here on 15th April in the cash account we have said buy expenses account 250. So what it means is 250 is paid as expense. So my cash balance reduces by 250. So you can see here we have recorded transactions of 4th and 15th. Now any other cash transaction here? 18th April cash received from debtor 1200. So cash balance is going to increase. That is why on debit side I have written 18th April to debtors account 1200. Now the last entry 22nd April paid cash to creditors 800. Now the cash balance will reduce by 800. That is why on credit side we have said 22nd April by creditors account. I hope now you are clear with all the entries. So now you can see that from the transactions all transactions related to cash were classified and they were recorded in what is known as cash account. Now since all transactions are over on 30th April I will make the balance. So if I take the total on debit side it is 5100. My expenses are 250 and 800 which I will reduce. So I get the balance of 4050 and it is shown as by balance carried down. Next month at the beginning on 1st May I will say 2 balance brought down 4050. Have you understood what is a ledger account? Now this is not only for cash. We are going to make ledger accounts for all the items. So if you look back at these transactions, there are opening balances and various transactions. Using them we have to make various accounts. If you look at opening balances, we had cash, creditors, debtors, capital. So we will try to make all these accounts. Now I trust you have understood cash account. On similar lines there are other accounts. Now let us look at purchase account. If you remember there was only one purchase entry on 2nd April to creditors account which is 3000. I will carry that balance. For sales there were two entries. There was one cash sale. There was one credit sale. So buy cash 2400 by debtor 1250. This is how the sales account will look like. Let us go back and have a look at transactions once again. So you can see here there was one credit purchase and one cash sale, one credit sale. All this was recorded into a cash account, purchase account and also sales account. I hope you are getting me. Now along with this there are other accounts which are affected. They are debtors account and also the creditor account. So you can see in debtors account balance was 1200. There was a credit sale 
on 7th April. So, 2 sale 1250. On the credit side, on 18th April, we have got buy cash sale 1200. And based on these three transactions, the total on debit side was 2450. So, so I have arrived, this was the position. I have arrived at a balance of 1250 and that balance will be carried on 1st May as 2 balance brought down 1250. Now, creditors account, there were 2 entries, there was a credit purchase of 3000 and cash of 800 is paid. So, there is a balance of 3000 that will be carried to next month. Have you understood the account making now? I know we are going little bit in hurry. I do not want to show you very much in detail how do you make the account, but just to have an idea as to how does the journal look like and how does the ledger look like, we are doing this exercise. Now, let us look at expense account, 250 of expense is paid. So, 2 x cash 250, capital account, no entry throughout the period, opening balance of 1900, same balance we will carry as a balance carried down and it will go to next month again as a opening balance brought down 1900. Is it fine? Have you understood now? Ledger. Now, to take a brief recap. We have looked at journal, which is a book of original entry. So, as soon as the entry happens serially in a chronological order, I write all the entries in the journal. From the journal, I classify the entries and transfer them to respective accounts known as ledger. Now, this practice is little bit cumbersome. Nowadays, of course, computers are used. Nobody is actually writing in the book, journal, ledger. So, what is done is certain transactions which repeatedly happen, I make some specialized books which are known as subsidiary book. So, for example, sales, sales will happen 100 times in one day. So, instead of recording every time in the journal and ledger, I make a separate book known as sales book, purchase, I will make a separate book known as purchase book. Like this, some separate books are known those books are known as subsidiary books. So, you can see here. So, in case of large business organization, instead of journalizing, which is a laborious job, we will make specialized books known as subsidiary books. Now, subsidiary book is a book of original entry, generally maintained by large organization where different type of transactions happen. So, we have subsidiary books like this, we have a cash book to record cash, bank and discount transactions. We have purchase book, which will record purchase related transactions on credit, sales book, which will again record the transactions of credit sale. Cash sales we do not record here, because they are already recorded in the cash book. Then purchase return book to record the return of goods sale return book to record the return of uh, sale uh, sold items from the customers back to us. Sometimes, we also have a bill receivable book to record the receipt of promissory notes or hundis. Then, bills payable book, where we may record the issue of promissory notes or hundis. There is one more book known as journal proper. Now, many of the transactions are already recorded in these books, cash, purchase, sales, but what transactions do not get recorded in those books, get recorded in a separate book or a journal, which is known as journal proper. So, in this session now, we have done, initially we have talked about a few cases of p &L account and tried to understand p &L. and in the latter part, we have tried to see recording of transactions. So, how the transactions are recorded in journal, in ledger and in the subsidiary books. So, thank you so much. Next session, we will go into further more details into recording of transactions. So, we will stop here.